What's up everybody, welcome back to Camera Exchange. So today we have the brand new Fuji X100V and I'm honestly really excited about this one because I own the X100T and I didn't feel like going to the F was a big enough upgrade for me. So now that the V is out, I really wanna get out, shoot this camera and see if it's worth upgrading from my T. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first place I wanna start this is gonna be the overall fit and finish of the X100V. And I gotta say, Fuji did a pretty good job. The camera looks really nice. It's aesthetically appealing. The lines are a lot straighter. Everything's a lot more flush and just tucked in. And it just looks like they really put some time into thinking about how this camera was gonna look. And it really showed because it looks really nice. Now, one thing I did notice on this top part that I really did like was the ISO selection right over here. You can pop it up and it's a smooth scroll if you leave it up. And if you wanna select your ISO and leave it in one spot, you just push it back down and it locks right in. You also have your custom up here and your auto as well. So I thought just that alone was a really cool thing because if you are changing your ISO a lot, which you know isn't too common, but if you are doing it, it's nice and smooth. And if you just wanna lock in, you just press down. So it's a pretty nice feature to have. One thing I did notice that was wildly different from the previous model was there is no D-pad anymore. So it is just the toggle switch up here. And I've noticed from model to model that the button selection is getting smaller and smaller. On my X100T, I have all these buttons over here and I have a lot just going on. To the F, they had the D-pad, the toggle switch, and this row here. And they kind of got rid of the selection on the side. Now on the V, there's even less going on on the back, which isn't always a bad thing. It's less to mess around with, it's less to accidentally touch. And I really like, honestly, that it's gone because I used to touch it all the time with my thumb and it would drive me crazy. I hold my thumb a little bit lower, almost down here when I'm shooting with this camera, and it would drive me nuts with it hovering over the D-pad or finding an awkward place to hold it if I didn't have a little grip at the top. And it just kind of drove me wild. So now that it's gone, for me, that's kind of awesome. I just used the toggle anyway, so it really didn't make a big difference. Now, another thing I did notice as well is that the screen is flush and it feels really nice, but you do still have an indention right here to pull it out and move it around if necessary. So it really felt like they thought about quite a bit and really delivered on it pretty well. It is now also USB-C. So even more innovation being brought to it, they're just keeping up with the times and USB-C is just so much simpler. All right, so moving on to the bottom, they did happen to keep the same battery that you're seeing in all the other models, which is nice because most people have accumulated a lot of these. I know I have, so I would be pretty discouraged if the battery changed. It might kind of sway my opinion, probably not too much, but at least a little bit. The other thing to mention is that the memory card slot is UHS-1. Uh, it is not a UHS-2 slot, which I feel like it really should have been. I don't know why companies aren't moving on to UHS-2 and just making it kind of standard. It's probably a cost thing, but all in all, I just felt like it should have been there. So moving on to the image resolution of this camera, I gotta say it's been a night and day difference shooting with the X100V than shooting with an X100F or T. And the big thing for me there is the overall quality. It's amazing on the X100V, especially in comparison to the F. And there's a few big reasons for that. One being the lens construction. So while spec wise, it's pretty much the same. It's still a 23 millimeter F2. And it still has eight elements broken into six different groups. One big difference is that the X100F only had one spherical element, whereas the X100V, they did go ahead and put two spherical elements. And where that helps is with that glowing issue that a lot of people were getting with the F, and also that bulbing issue as well with things being kind of overly distorted. The two spherical elements give you more of a flat feel and they produce less glow. 
Now, Fuji also did more as far as the refinement and construction of the glass as well, so that additionally helped yield a sharper image. All right, so moving on to the sensor, Fuji did decide to put the X-Trans 4 sensor, which is the same sensor you're seeing the X-T3 and the X-Pro3 into the X100 lineup, which is really cool, because now you're combining great glass, an awesome sensor, and you're yielding these really high resolution, crystal clear images that just look beautiful. Now, one other thing they did add as well is some internal NDs. So you actually have four stops of ND inside the body. So just another great addition from Fuji. So I want to go ahead and talk about the autofocus system on the camera because I was pretty impressed with it. It's fast and accurate, but that's because it has 425 autofocus points and it is a hybrid autofocus system, meaning it has phase and contrast detection. That gives you both speed and accuracy, which I'm definitely seeing with the 100V. It's a really nice camera. But on top of that, you also have face and eye detect and also tracking. So all in all, it's been tracking my subjects great, it locks on and it gives me crystal clear images, which I love. Now, one thing I did notice was the fact that if you're looking through the back screen, it does seem like that little green square that tracks your subject around does lag a little bit. Now, I wasn't missing my shots, but it doesn't stay perfectly with my subject, so it can maybe lead to you thinking that you're not getting your subject. But what I noticed was even though it is lagging behind, it's definitely hitting the subject. So now I wanna go ahead and take this time to talk about the viewfinder on this camera because it is pretty impressive and it's some really cool tech in it. It's a hybrid viewfinder, meaning it is both optical with digital overlay and electronic OLED finder. And the electronic portion is 3.6 million dots, so it does have good resolution as well. Now, it doesn't quite look as good as, of course, optical is going to look because it's optical. You're gonna see perfectly what you're looking at, but me myself, I prefer electronic because I've gotten very used to it and very accustomed to using electronic viewfinders so much that I really don't care to look through optical anymore. But for everybody out there who does want to have the choice and maybe prefers optical, it's really cool that Fuji put that in there as an option for you. Now, moving on to the LCD though, the LCD is a 1.6 million dot, three inch tilting LCD, which is really cool because the X100F did not have this feature and it really helps to get down low or up high. Plus, it does sit flush, which is just another nice aesthetic to the camera because it doesn't bulge out. So Fuji's doing some really cool stuff with their 100V. Hey guys, it's Video Vince. So I wanted to talk about some of the video features that Fujifilm gave the X100V. Now mind you that this camera is not supposed to be a dedicated video camera, but Fujifilm did pack the X100V with some pretty good capabilities. Starting out, Fujifilm did give the X100V the ability to shoot 4K at 30 frames per second at up to 200 megabits per second, which is actually kind of crazy to think about. The video specs are pretty close to what Fujifilm gave the X-T30. Now you also got some really good picture profiles starting out with Eterna. Personally, Eterna is my favorite picture profile to use when shooting on the Fujifilm system. They also included F-Log into the X100V, so if you're in any high contrast scenario, that dynamic range of the F-Log profile is gonna help out tremendously. So let's move on to the ports on the side. You do have a 2.5 millimeter microphone jack, and for the headphone jack, they gave you the ability to adapt a USB type C so you can listen to your audio. Now I really don't like that you have to find adapters for this camera, but it's such a small workaround that I'm okay with it. Now moving on to the bottom, you, Fujifilm did include a micro HDMI port, so you are able to shoot 422 10-bit via HDMI, which is absolutely insane for this camera. So the video features on the X100V are pretty capable if you're just looking for a single camera to take with you on a vacation or anywhere else. 
All right, so that's gonna wrap up our hands-on review on the Fuji X100V, and I gotta say this camera was awesome. I really thought at the start of it that it was just gonna be a brushed up version of the X100F with some you know, minor new features and some cool new stuff. But honestly, at the end of this, this camera performs leaps and bounds better than the X100F ever could dream of doing. Fuji added a lot of things to this camera from the redesign of the lens elements to 4K to a new sensor and overall a new design that just looks appealing and they did a really good job at it. So it feels like they listened to everything that people either complained about or really desired the X100F to have and put it into the V-Series. So I gotta give it to Fuji, they made a great camera. I really enjoyed shooting it and I think it's more than adequate to replace my X100T. So I'll finally probably be selling that and picking one of these up to replace it. So all in all, I love the camera. It was a joy to shoot. Now remember to check us out on Facebook and Instagram, show us some love there, and also give us a like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys next time.